Okay, hello everybody. This is Dr. Willie Jolly. And this is Steve Taylor Jolly. And we're the uh, propriet proprietors <laughs> of Happily Married Monday with the Jollies. And we're also the authors of this book that has just been blowing up around the world now. Make love, make money, make it last. Ten Secrets to Shape a Great Marriage. And we're so grateful for all of you who have made this book popular, who have told others that this is a book that's transparent, where we talk about the things that break up and make up great marriages and things that keep great marriages from happening. And we talk about the big three boulders, sex, money, and communication. And then we talk about the lessons we've learned over the last 34 years of us being married, haven't had an argument in over 30 years, as well as the lesson we learned from interviewing and being around people who were great role models and mentors. Who were successful or who are successfully married. Right. Yes. <laughs> so one of those couples that have been our friends and mentors uh, over the years in the speaking industry are a just an incredible couple. He is a iconic speaker, Speaker Hall of Famer, who uh, was a former fighter pilot and jet pilot, and then he became a sales expert, turned around a uh, real estate organization from worst to first, and then started speaking on how to accelerate and take your sales to the top. He is a, a Hall of Famer, as I said, CPAE, Danny Cox, and his beautiful bride of over 50 years, 53 years, uh, Theo, but we call her Teddy, Teddy Cox. And so we're just grateful to be in their home in Tustin, California. And I am here. He has uh, been an active part of helping me to be uh, seen worldwide on the Hour of Power television broadcast where he's a, va a valued part of Which was the... Dr. Robert Schuler's brainchild. That's right. right. And he's a friend. He was a friend of Dr. Schuler's mm -hmm. and so many others. One more tidbit. Uh, when I was getting my doctorate degree, I got my degree at the California Graduate School of Theology, which was in Orange, California. And I would often stay with them. He has one of the most incredible libraries of any individual in the world, rare books. And so let me tell you a few of the people who have come here to just sit in his library. Not only me, I, when I was, I would come, I, I couldn't sleep because he had so many incredible <laughs> books. I'd sit up all night reading. It's true, <laughs> it's true right? Yeah. And, and, uh, but I'm not the only one who, who comes here and raves about his book. Many of the Hall of Famers in the Speakers Association. But then some of the well-known greats, John Maxwell, mm -hmm. uh, the great John Maxwell comes here to Danny Cox's house and sits and learns from the books that he has in his library. So Danny and Teddy have been married for 53 <laughs> years, but they have, it's not your normal, what you everyday run-of-the-mill marriage situation, how it started or how it came to be. It was some 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 challenge, some tragedy, some difficulty that made it even possible for them to get married. So I'll let y'all introduce to how y'all got married and some of the secrets you have for how you've stayed married for so long. So Danny, how do y'all get married? How, how'd you meet this pretty girl? Well, through the Air Force, okay, uh, so to speak. <clears throat> I was ready to go to uh, uh, Michigan uh, from Tucson, and I'd been flying the supersonic fighters, uh, <clears throat> the Voodoo, which was a 1,200-mile-an-hour airplane, and I was flying that, and I was also uh, doing test, ma maintenance test flying, they call it, where I'd take something up and try to get it to do what it had been doing, and it wasn't supposed to, and they did they couldn't fix it. Uh -huh. So... Uh, I did that, and then they said, no, you're going to go to Michigan, and they gave me a base there, and uh, I didn't go, uh, not because I didn't want to, but I just felt like I was, you know, wasn't sure, 
and they talked about sending me to Columbus, Ohio first. And when I finally had told them I would go to Michigan, I came in one day and said to my commander, and he was a double ace in World War II. Wow. He had shot down 10 airplanes, mm -hmm. and the first five was in the first flight. Wow. And he was short. <laughs> I had him by an, almost an inch. <laughs> and and, and uh, I, I said, I don't want to go to Michigan anymore. And he said, what's wrong? I said, I just want to go back to Columbus, Ohio. I've never been there, but I said, I, I really feel like I want to go there. And he looked at my rank and then he looked at his own rank, which was a bird colonel, and he said, uh, what made you change your mind? I said, I just got to go to Columbus, Ohio. So I finally came the day that I was going to move there, <clears throat> got everything moved, packed up from my home in Tucson, went up to Columbus, and knowing that there was something special about that location, and then even more so that neighborhood. Mm. Uh, and uh, I, I went back out to the squadron the next morning, and I said to him, uh, I'm your new pilot. And I said, I've already rented my home. They said, where? I said, uh, on King's Row Court. And they said, oh, that's where that's where uh, uh, Theo lives. Hmm. I said, uh, who's he? <laughs> <laughs> they said, you don't understand. She's uh, a widow whose husband was lost in Vietnam. Hmm. Uh, three, no, how many, many, many months ago? Uh, or a year? No, it was about four months. Four months. Four months. Yeah, about four or five months. And so I said, okay. So I move in directly across the street from her. I hadn't met her, hadn't seen her up close. <laughs> and uh, it was interesting that uh, it was about three months later, I was working with my Corvette Stingray. Mm -hmm. Really good fighter pilots <laughs> have Corvette Stingrays. Have Corvette Stingrays. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, uh, I was standing out in the driveway working on my car, and I thought, somebody's behind me. And I turned around, and it was this little five-year-old girl that I'd seen going in over there at Theo's house. <clears throat> and uh, so I knew she was one of the three, three daughters. And this little girl looks at me, and she looks up, and she says, uh, hi. I said, hi. She said, uh, my name is Kendra. What's yours? I said, Danny. And she looked at me for a moment and she said, do you have a mommy, Danny? <laughs> and I said, no, I don't. She says, I don't have a daddy and my mommy lives right there. <laughs> I still kid her about send the kids out to work the streets. Here. <laughs> go, go, find, go, go find us a daddy. <laughs> And I knew that he had been in this same squadron, but he was one of the, well, he was the 180 first guy killed in Vietnam out of 55,000. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, his body had never been recovered, mm -hmm. still never been recovered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so pretty soon, here comes Theo across the street. She was saying, well, you're, you're Danny, and I said, yes. And I said, near Theo, and and, uh, and uh, I, I kept wanting to say, what did you tell that little girl of yours <laughs> to say when she got over here? But I didn't really uh, do that. But anyway, we introduced ourselves, and we went out a couple of times for platonic dates. Uh -huh. And then uh, I kept thinking, Boy, I don't know 
this is, I was married once before, no kids from that marriage, but uh, and I'd always said that I'd never say I was never going to get married. I ne would never say when, but if I get married again, because mm. it was worth it to me to have that. And uh, so as it turned out, we uh, started dating more seriously, and uh, it was uh, it was re really a lot of fun. But uh, all of the guys in the squadron and the wives in the squadron were saying, "She's going to go out again with that, uh, that, that the divorced pilot," and and I said, "Yep, that's it." So. And they called me the Witter Walker with yeah. all them kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Witter Walker. Because uh -huh. that was Witter, Witter, Witter Walker. Walker. Witter Walker was my uh, husband, oh. my name, my oh. husband's name. Yeah. And uh, so uh, we started dating more seriously. And we finally decided, decided a few months later it was, it was us. We should get married. So we decided that this was the day we were going to tell the girls uh -huh. that it was going to, this is it. And uh, so I said, okay, I'll walk across the street to that condominium that looks just like yours. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I will, <coughs> I will go over to my house and wait till you tell the girls. And no matter how long it takes, even the next, the next morning, <laughs> I said, I'll, I'll wait all night. And she said, okay. So I walk across a two lane street there in this condominium area and uh, unlock the door, open the door and the phone was ringing. And I grabbed the phone and I said, this is Captain Cox. <laughs> and she said, well, this is me. Come on back. <laughs> I said, I've been gone three minutes from your house. I said, did you tell them? She said, yeah. I said, what did they say? She said, just come on back. Aww. I said, uh, uh, oh, give me an idea. She said, come on back, and hung up. <laughs> I walked the longest route I've ever taken across the two-lane street. I was thinking, oh, what's she going to say? What What are the kids going to say? What Are they, are they going to like this, or are they not going to like it? And I walk into the living room, and here she is with the three girls, and there were, what, eight, seven? Seven, uh, seven five, and, and two. two. And two. And, and Kendra, the one that introduced us, she was also our gymnast. Uh -huh. And uh, she came running across <laughs> the living room, jumped up and threw her arms around me, and she said, I know something. <laughs> I said, what do you know? She says, you're going to marry us. <laughs> You're going to marry, marry us. us. And I said, us. I guess, yeah, we're talking <laughs> us. Commitment. Yeah. And so we, we, we got married, went to Acapulco on our honeymoon, had a great time, and uh, we just, like, Hand in glove, it was just. You did told the us. Kids go too? Oh no! Oh, no, 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 no! Now you told me uh, before we did this, y'all have never had an argument. No, 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 sorry. You've about. never no. had an argument? No. no. Okay. No. no. Well, how fifty-three that years. How did that work? How did that happen? Well, it happened this way. Uh-oh. Three sets of goals. Okay. Okay. There were my goals, her goals, and our goals. Oh, let's say that again. The so one of the keys was my goals, my goals her, her goals, goals and, and our goals. goals. Wow. You gotta have three of those. Yep. Why? It's like a three legged stool. Mm. It can't stand on two. 
Mm. Sure can't say it on one, mm. but with three, yeah. Wow. Well, we found out it works pretty good. So well. you support each other's goals? Because I didn't know Teddy was an archaeologist. Yes. So he <laughs> I can't even spell the word. Yeah. So he did. He, that was my goal, and he supported that. And then um, in all the years I went to school and got my master's degree and went on digs and traveled around the world with my girlfriend and we visiting archaeological sites and he supported all Amazing. that. And yeah. then I supported and worked for, worked with him in the office. So, so yeah. when, so when the we, office way, so why don't you say that? I got, a, I got in, to give that to you. speaking business. Yes. yes. And... You as a couple were one of the first couples that I saw doing this speaking business that I did not understand. Because they told but us when we were starting. They invited us to, yeah. our, to your uh -huh. home. Uh -huh. And I said, what, what does an office look like? <laughs> and you took me to your office, your big, beautiful home, so many rooms, and you said, you opened a drawer. And yeah. how you organize your yeah. files. And that was the first time that I actually had a visual of, oh, <laughs> this is how you start to organize uh -huh. your business. Yeah. yeah. And I tell that story yeah. to this day. Oh, she good. tells that good. story. Good. At, we yes. speak of speakers chapters. She said, uh, Theo or Teddy. Um, I was Theo when we met. Right. I yeah. became Teddy about, what, 20 yeah, years, ago years ago or so. Well, actually, I became Teddy when we when we didn't want people to think that we had a mom and pop a little mom and pop organization Theo Walker or Theo Cox and so he but he came up with this uh, idea of uh, Teddy Patton because Teddy came from my name Theo but my dad's name was Teddy was Ted and I was oh. named after him and then Patton was from my uh, maiden name, which was Patenji. Oh, wow. So he came up with the name That's... Teddy Patton. All the bureaus that we worked with and everybody, uh, all the companies that we worked with, they all knew me as Teddy Patton. Wow. Well, they have been able to sustain a marriage for 53 years. But, but he, here's the thing. Yeah. I, I think you can't miss this. They work together. Yep. As yes. As a couple. Right. Yeah. What we do. Yeah. You're right. And they had a marriage. So they were a working couple. Yeah. Yes. When you came to the National Speaks Association that first year without me, I, mean, I had like no clue as what was going on. When you would call me and say, oh, I met my tribe. We can do this together. <laughs> and you're going to come the next year. And I patronized him and said, all right, sweetheart, we're going to do this. Oh, well, I had no clue. You didn't know what you were going to do. I, I had no clue, didn't understand. But people would say, when you would introduce me, here's my wife Dee, and she's gonna work with us. And they were like, don't work with your spouse. Don't work with your spouse. If you work with your spouse, you are going to get divorced. Oh. We heard that a lot of times. You lot. did? Yeah, you heard a number yes. of people. But some people who were speakers, because they didn't have good foundations. Well, yes. yeah, you have to have that first. So one of the keys to your success is you had a good foundation as a yes. marriage. You, yes. you, you were good friends, and you made a decision to marry them, not marry just her, marry right. them. Right. Yeah, and you right. didn't do it. And half the girls hearted. felt that way too. Yeah, the girls were all and in. I was, did, and and, yeah. and did, as they grew into teens, was it always good, or did they have you know were they ever uh, did they lose back? their minds? Yeah. Oh. Did they lose their minds? You know, teenagers <laughs> tend to come sometimes. Well, they were typical teenagers. Right. Yes, and we had two. The first two, the oldest two, were eighteen months apart, so they were just following each other so they were typical teenagers um but, but, and so let me but ask we didn't have any big big dress uh, so you don't argue so that's a good part and so let's say you disagree about something so that's how a, do you resolve yeah how do you handle you're disagreements not quite on the same page you think one way and, and danny thinks another way as to what you're going to do how how do you talk it through? i figure i have to sell her on my <laughs> way. Ah. She, she has to sell me on her, her way. way. And we look at it just you know, very calmly and 
you know, we decide, and I say, okay, I'll, I'll go that way. Mm. So you are selling each other on the value of why uh, we each one, we uh, each one of our yeah, that that is we, yeah, our yeah. Yes. yes, yeah. Okay, right here, I got it on page number sixty-eight. Selling is good for business okay. and oh, marriage. Yes. So <laughs> right, well, you do. We have that right here. It's page 68. Now, we had not interviewed them before, but no. we believe that you have to sell. I didn't know that they were going to say that, but that's exactly right. Selling is good for business and marriage. Yeah. And I had to sell D on certain things over the years. She had to sell me on things. <laughs> yep. And we talk it over. And so I had to sell on marrying <laughs> yeah. me, right? Oh, so, we did. Uh, uh, so let's say uh, you were giving a couple, a young couple, some advice on how to stay happily married. What would be some of the things? I already told you to have a three-legged stool of the yeah. his, mm -hmm. hers, and our goals. That, In terms of goals. Now, right. Do you write your goals down? Let's dig deep. No. Do you write your goals down? Well, I, some of them I do, I, but I, I'm very focused on it. I guess it comes from being a supersonic fighter pilot for so many years. I mean, anytime I was really committed to something, <clears throat> I really hung in there. And uh, I think that was one of the things that uh, that helped. All right. Um, now, I want to ask you, as you have built this marriage, and again, go back to your daughters, the three daughters. Uh, yeah. You've, you, you've seen them grow. And if you were going to, you know, or your granddaughters or your grandchildren now come by and say, hey, I what do they call y'all, by the way, Pop? Well, no, or what? Granddad. Yeah. Granddad. 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 Mm -hmm. So what? What's the? You, see, you know what? I'm about to think about getting married. What should I be thinking? How should I get? What should I do? What advice would you give them? Well, first of all, all of them are several inches taller than me. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm not in that bloodline. Uh, <laughs> and but anyway, uh, I, <clears throat> I think that it was. It, it was not pushing them or saying, don't do this or don't do that. But we've always talked about the church. Mm. And that really helps. And um. They grew up in the Crystal Cathedral and uh, it's... They did, faith. but they're Your not. Faith. Yeah, but faith. they don't. All attend church like well, that. But, one family does. But, but but you would give them that but advice. We would give them that advice, yeah. whether they took it yes. or not. So here we go, chapter number two: make God an equal <laughs> part of your marriage. So we already say that in there. So I'm, I, they're confirming some of the points. They've already confirmed that they were best friends. They were, became best friends, and they don't argue because they're best friends. They can work through the situations. Friends first. They confirm make God an equal part of your marriage. They confirm about selling is good for business and marriage. They confirmed about the fact that you got to communicate and talk to the kids and have communication with each other. So these are some of the things that successful marriages do, and y'all have been a example, a model of running a business together, which we learned some, temp some tips from them and modeled from them how to have a marriage and a and us working together in a business, as well as the fact that you also have been able to stay married for 53 years and not argue. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, they are just as buoyant now as the day we met them, uh, you know, 28 years ago. <laughs> wow. And 28, 28 or 29 years ago that they are still buoyant, they're still active, they've got this beautiful home. You gotta see that I wish I could it was light outside. Cypress so you could, trees. You could see their <laughs> there must yard. We've got hundred and fifty trees. Yeah. A hundred and fifty trees. Cypress times. trees. Yeah. Uh, landscaping, roses. Swimming pool. Swimming pool is most beautiful enclave. Calming. Oh my goodness. Anyway, so um Teddy. Oh, Oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. One more thing I yeah. want to say about her. Uh, <laughs> it, it also helped that when we would go downtown in Columbus, Ohio, <clears throat> to have dinner or something, it, she would have people walk over to her and say, uh, are you Juliet Prowse? Mm. And I remember Juliet Pratt. Yeah, I do too. She was a beautiful lady. Yeah. All right. And so. I she does look. <laughs> she does remind. She does have that. Yeah. yeah. Of course, God rest her soul. She, she's been. Uh, Juliet's been dead for several years, but 
Teddy uh, was a beautiful woman that you were going out yeah, on your yeah, arm with. Yeah. <laughs> so you got these beautiful girls now. You got a beautiful wife, and then y'all and you weren't speaking then, were you? No, yeah, you were no. still in the. Uh, co- I was still, still in the Air Force. I was doing. Oh uh, yeah. PR stuff for the squadron, mm-hmm. and I was getting them to do. Uh, Oh, what do you call them? Uh, uh, things about the squadron from the local PSAs? television stations. Yeah, uh, PSAs. Yeah, yeah, PSAs. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so, so. And then you went into real estate. And after you went into real estate. Air Force. So yeah, they wouldn't hire me, and I, I would call all these airlines once I got out, and I'd call them and and say I want to, I've got. Twenty-four hundred dollars a high-performance jet fire time. It was a mm. maintenance test pilot. Never had an accident. Never put a mark on an airplane. And they'd say, "Oh yeah, we're gonna we we'll want to talk to you. <clears throat> we'll mail you an application." I said, "Wait a minute. One more question." I said, "What are your height requirements for <laughs> flying with your airline?" They said, "Well, as a pilot, you got to be uh, five feet eight. I said, that's my goal. And they said, and I'm five feet four. Okay. And so as a result, I couldn't get a job with the airline. Wow. And they loved my, my, my background and ability, but they, uh, didn't like that uh, five feet. I said, "Well, I'll, I'll keep working on it." <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it was uh, well. I think some of the things we want to make sure you all know is that it's possible. It's possible mm-hmm. to have a marriage fifty-three years and, and and still counting and growing and going, and not argue. You don't and have they to work together. And they work together, so they're together. That's they're together twenty-four-seven, just about, and so. What we want to encourage you, while we have Happily Married Monday with the Jollies, and this book we wrote it for, for two reasons. One, to share with people the lessons that have helped us. We want to also save a million marriages and then enhance a million mm-hmm. more. And so we want you to go to jollymarriage.com, get the book, get two copies, one for you and one for your significant other. Read it together. Listen and learn from each other with the questions we have at the end of each chapter. Discuss them. You will learn things like the couple who said they learned so much. They had been married 15 years. They learned so much that they didn't know about each other, and it changed their marriage. We've had so many couples who have said it has saved their marriages, enhanced their marriages, and kept them going and growing together. So, Happily Married Monday is here because we want to save marriages. Get the book. Happily Married Monday is a built on the Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last book. And get the audio at jollymarriage.com slash live. Jolly and look marriage, for right? the workbook. And look for the workbook. So, <laughs> Jolly Very Marriage. Very entertaining. It should be out soon. In June. Okay, good. Well, and soon. Soon. All right. Yes, and, dear. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I want to thank uh, Danny Cox and his beautiful bride, Teddy. And I want to thank them for being a great model to us. How we started our business, our speaker business. Now, when we do speaker chapters and we go to speak for speaker organizations, she quotes Teddy and says, Here's a lady who helped us. Um, now, hold on, before we go, 53 years, you've got. The girls are now grown, and two of the girls have grandchildren now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. two of the girls have grand- got yeah, grandchildren, grandchildren, which means they are great grandparents. Uh, two two great grandchildren. Wow. And um, any other advice as we close out? How to stay married? How to stay <laughs> happily married? <laughs> well, you gotta get Appreciate away. Appreciate each other. Ooh. Be kind. Yeah, yeah. And I learned that from Rick Rees- Rick Rigsby. To- Wow. The third grade dropout. Oh yeah, he yeah, out there be friend. kind and yeah. Oh, he's great. He's a great guy. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna maybe get him on sometime. His brother is Judge Robert Rigsby, a dear friend of ours as well. So 
Stay tuned to us. Stay connected to us. Be kind to your spouse and your significant other. Talk to each other. Love on each other. Be best friends and sell each other on your values and your ideas. It works. And sell remember that we will see yeah. you more and more in the future with even bigger things because we want to do seminars all over the country, rallies to save marriages. We want you to be a part of it if you're interested in doing that or interested in getting more information when we're coming to your city or doing something in your city or doing something online, just email us at info at willyjolly.com, info at willyjolly.com. And then lastly, I want you to know that we really do appreciate your sharing this with everybody you know because we are getting so many people say, my friend shared this with me and it had a profound impact on my life. And that's what we want you to do. Bless somebody else. This is Dr. Willie Jolly. And this is Dee Taylor Jolly. Our guests, Danny and Teddy Cox. And for sure, your best is yet to come. The best is. Jolly out. Jolly out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't help.